So in this session, we will be starting with API testing. Before understanding API testing, we will be understanding software architecture because this will help you a lot to have a better understanding on APIs. What is software architecture? Software architecture consists of one tier, two tier, and three tier. A tier can be referred as a layer. Three layers are involved in the application, namely presentation layer, business layer, and data layer. These are the three layers which are always um, involved in an application or in any software. Let's have a better understanding of this. So whenever you see any software or any application, it actually consists of three parts. So first is your UI layer. So I called it at UI, user interface or GUI, graphical user interface layer. This is my first layer. Second layer is business logic layer, or you can say application layer. Application, or you can say business logic. And your another layer is database layer. UI layer is that layer where you can see the things. For example, if you open any website, whatever is visible to you, you can see that. That is called UI layer. So UI layer is developed in maybe HTML or some other languages, but this is to see the output which is coming from here. Now, database layer is something in which actually the data is stored. For example, you are just accessing a website of uh, housing, uh, the MLS, where the all listing of houses are there. Now, houses are listed over here. In the database, the record is there, right? It is stored inside a database. And UI is there to display you that. But how many houses? On the basis of your uh, request, your, your requirements, which house is should be filtered to display over here is processed by this application or business logic layer. So this is simply database. This is simply user interface. But now on user interface, according to your requirement, what data should be displayed is actually processed by this layer business logic layer. So this is how your all softwares are designed. Now these softwares could be one tier, two tier or three tier. What's the difference between all these three? We will be discussing one tier. So if all three of them is packed as a one unit, in one system only, this is called one tier. Let me explain this to you. For example, MS Office. MS Office is on your machine if you have downloaded and installed it. It's in your machine, right? So you have user interface in your own machine. You have database in your own machine and you have processing layer in your own machine. You don't have any concept of server over there. It is your machine on which everything is there. Any desktop application, you can say, it is on your system, right? So we have user interface where I can see if I have created any Word document, I can see that, right? It is getting stored in my own database, on my machine. I don't have some third party machine or machine sitting in remote place where my data is getting stored. It is my own machine. And if I want to filter, let's say I just want to see, um, uh, you know, name of a particular person in my, let's say, MS Excel, I can filter and my business logic or my application layer is working. So from database, it is just showing me the data which I want to see. So everything is on the client machine, on my own machine. This is called one tier architecture. When this all when this all is packed as a one unit on a client machine, on one machine. So this concept is called one tier. Now, what is two tier? So in this case, we have a concept of 
client and we have a concept of server. So let's say this is client and this is server. Now server is divided into two parts. One is called your um, database server and one is called web server. So which is application layer. So here, whenever client requests for something, let's say client is requesting some data on any server. Let's say I'm sitting in my, uh, remotely I'm working from, there is an option of a work from home. I'm sitting at my home, I'm connected to my office server. I'm connected to my office server. So I'm sitting at home, I am right now behaving as a client. This particular setting is acting as server of my office. I want to access some data from my office. Now I'm connected to this. I will say, okay, I want to see, um, you know, how many test cases uh, my other colleague have written, whether there is any defect found, I, I'm, I'm supposed to work on it or not. So I want to just access some information. So I will connect to my office database, or you can say server, and I will ask for the data according to my conditions. So data is here, condition is here, but now server is sitting somewhere else and client is sitting somewhere else. Because you should understand what is the difference between client and server. Client is someone who is requesting and server is someone who is fulfilling that request by giving the response. So client will make a request, server will give the response. So request and response. This particular terminology is initiated in this particular type of setup in two-tier um, architecture. When client is requesting for a particular option, it is sitting in the database of the server, but of course you don't want to see complete database. You want your own filters to be working on it. You want business logic to access that, calculate it, and then display you what you want to see. So this comes into this two-tier option. Now, if I talk about three-tier option, UI will first talk to application layer and then application layer will speak to database layer. It might be sitting somewhere else, it might be sitting somewhere else, and it might be sitting somewhere else. So this is three-tier application when user is requesting, and this is further requesting to the database, database will respond back to this. This will respond back to user interface. Mostly these type of communication happens over the internet. So now we will understand that in more details. Look at this. One tier architecture. This is just client here. Here you have your presentation layer, which is UI layer, your application layer, which is your logic layer, business logic layer, and this is your database layer sitting in the same uh, location in client here. But if I talk about two tier application, this is your client, this is your database. Database have both application layer and database layer inside it. So it is not divided into two parts. But if I talk about three tier application, we have client, application layer, and database layer sitting at a different location or maybe at the same location, but it is at the, these are three different servers. So these are two different servers and this is client. So this type of setting is called three tier application. What is API and how API works? Before making you understand about API, let me tell you here, API works on this layer, application layer or business logic layer. Here your API works. Now let's understand what is API. So API stands for application programming interface. This is the full form of API. API acts as an interface between two software application and allows the two software applications to communicate with each other. API is a collection of software functions that can be executed by another software program. Let me make you understand this. So here, 
this is let's say my one application this application will send the request to some databases and it will give response back to the application this is quite simple to understand but how actually it works why apis are required let me explain this thing to you why api testing first of all finding bugs at an early stage of an software development api testing will be helpful in finding the bugs at an early stage how let's say guys if i am testing from here right till now you know how to test from ui you have tested till now with the help of selenium with the help of, or maybe manual testing but you always worked on user interface you never had access on this this layer or this layer and what if i don't have user interface i want to test from here so if you are testing any user interface what you test maybe you are testing look and design of it but mainly you are checking if i'm asking for something whether the same data is displayed on the screen or not but who is displaying the data this layer is displaying the data by taking it from the database it is processing it and displaying so user interface is just to display the data right but processing which data needs to be displayed is done over here so this is what we are doing anyhow what we are doing we are testing if let's say online shopping i want to buy some t-shirts now i'm saying okay i want to buy some t-shirts now this database layer have the database of all the t-shirts for men for women for kids all the t-shirts i have over here now on this user interface i have some buttons where i can filter i can sort so i clicked on filter and in my filter i said i want to see t-shirts for women and it should be of size medium now of course this is user interface is not doing anything database layer is not doing anything database layer is giving data to business logic this business logic is actually filtering it and then giving it back to the user interface and displaying it over here so user interface is just for you guys so that we can see it right but main thing is being processed by this business logic so what if i directly come here and i test this what it will do first of all i'll be able to find the defects at an early stage because here the processing is happening database it is picking it is processing anyhow it will display the same thing over here when i'm accessing it at this level it will help me to find the bugs at early stage why not at this level why at this level so let's just imagine till now we have done ui testing with the help of selenium let's say i want to test 200 test cases with the help of selenium ui test cases my graphical user interface test cases i'm talking about i'm testing the same thing let's say the same scenario i'm taking now i want to test uh, whether it is displaying size medium uh, t-shirts for women i want to test that now i have somehow i have written 200 test cases let's say for an example i have written 200 test cases on it i wrote my selenium script i'm executing my selenium script now on the level of user interface lots of time it will take to just opening the browser opening the browser loading the user interface then you are checking what you can check over here also so it is opening the first of all browser which takes time uh, i'm not talking about one or two test cases if it is 200 it's going to take lots of hours then the website is getting loaded then it is moving to that element it is uh, clicking on that element and then it is displaying you the data which you can test just over here so that is the reason nowadays api testing is very much popular why because what you can access over here why to go here until or unless you are checking look and design of your user interface that's a different story if you are just looking whether your buttons are according to client requirement if if the display is like that that is a different thing then you cannot replace user interface testing 
But what we did till now, we were just testing whether it is providing us the same data according to the client requirement or not. We are testing data. We are testing the output. Again, I'm repeating why API testing because now I think you can relate with it better. Finding bugs at an early stage of software development. This is the advantage of API testing. Second is speed and coverage of testing. Let's say if I've written 200 UI tests, it may take 30 hours to run. But if I've written 200 API test cases, it will be executed in two minutes only. See time, the difference in the time here. That means you will find more bugs in less time while also being about to fix them immediately. Guys, what is easy? If I am fixing it at this stage, or if I'm fixing it at this stage, of course, if I'm fixing it over here, because here, lots of things has to be taken care of. Mostly your user interface is in HTML language. I'm just giving one example, although there are many languages, HTML, where you can see the things, right? But your business logic layers is developed in a languages like .NET, like Java, examples. And the database layer is in Oracle, SQL Server. If I am testing things over here, first of all, it's easy for me to fix it quickly. And secondly, it is less time consuming. And uh, most of the coverage of my test cases, I can do over here. Let's just understand this in more detail. What is UI testing and how it is different from API? I already discussed this, but let's just read it from here. So let's say this is one of the, uh, you know, the website I have, uh, its name is Pet Adoption Center, and I have to choose uh, what I want to adopt. So let's say I, I chose cats, I chose a uh, fish. This is my user interface, by the way. And I clicked on, I chose the service called adoption. I clicked on submit. Now what will happen? It will go to the database. Business logic will process it. It will uh, come here and it will display it to you. Now at the UI level, the simple test can present us with a couple of challenges. First, we are hampered by the physical limits of our browser and the network connection, of course, because I need to be connected with the database. So my internet should be working. And secondly, a browser needs to be uh, open. So I'm, I'm hampered with the physical limits, browser limits, network limits, internet should be working and have to load the browser each time we want to run an iteration of this test. So every time I have to load browser whenever I want to test for this particular test case. Second, any of these elements could change on the screen and our test would fail. If the dog's entry is covering the cat entry, we wouldn't be able to click it. Our test would fail. You might have seen this a lot. Let's say if this is overlapping this or this is overlapping this. You know, I'm just telling you what could be the shortcomings of UI testing. What if it is overlapping this? I'm not able to find the element locator of this particular option. So this will be hampered. We wouldn't be able to click it and a test case will fail. These challenges are annoying on their own. Now try driving 10,000 different names and combination to this form and see your build time grind to a halt. So if you see this thing, this is just few options. What if there are many options? So we will be involved in this thing. We will be just revolving around these things only, the look and feel when we are testing the data, whether it is giving us the right options or not. If you have seen most of the effects which you are getting now, if you are running any Selenium scripts, it is mostly finding the element locator and elements. But you are not testing that. Most of the times we are spending in that stuff. And the funny thing is we are not even testing that. We are testing the data, whether the data is coming right or wrong. User interface have these disadvantages. Now, what if, if I have API? I have to just hit the API. I mean, I have to just click on that link. It will go to the database, display it to you. You need not to open the browser, check whether your UI look and design is not hindering in your way. It is not coming in your way. It is not restricting you in getting the data. So this is the reason your API testing is very much popular.